hi students today we are going to understand the, the topic pollination from chapter 2 sexual reproduction in flowering plants 12th cbse biology before we go into the topic if you have been watched the previous videos on microsporogenesis megasporogenesis and so on please watch those videos please don't forget to subscribe and please share with your friends if you find the video useful all right so before we go into this topic pollination from your small classes you have been learning what is pollination so i don't think i have to explain that detail but i'll be going into the pdf of the textbook to tell you what all specifically you should be studying so before that let's quickly recap what is meant by pollination pollination is the transfer of pollen grain which is present on the stamen right into the stigma part of the flower and that process is called as pollination now it can happen in different ways it can happen in a way that the pollen grain from here the same flower can fall over here the stigma that is the first option okay that and that is called as autogamy now let's say the flower has some wind around and let's say for some reason the pollen grain of this flower has gone and fallen on the stigma of another flower but on the same plant then you call that as eugenogamy now instead of uh pollinating the same same flower on the same plant let's say the pollen grains flew far away or some agent like a bee came and took away this pollen and transferred it it to another plant's flower of the same species i have drawn the same at least that is what i meant same plant right so that means that it is cross pollination otherwise called as xenogamy all right so this much you should know and we will also understand what is my when by an agent of pollination an agent means somebody who does this work all right it can be wind it can be water so in that case we will call that as abiotic and if it is something like a living organism it could be human it could be bird it could be anything that is living we will call that as biotic that's it that you should know another concept that we will cover is outbreeding device so the word you hear and then you get almost two marks in every question paper and you would wonder what this is it just means that outbreeding means cross pollination okay so the plant wants to do cross pollination preferably it prefers cross pollination because of two reasons one is you get variation another is better varieties are produced due to cross pollination because of these two reasons and would prefer cross pollination to ensure cross pollination what are the mechanisms that the uh, nature has brought about those are called as outbreeding devices so these things we will be quickly covering up from the pdf of the textbook i have marked important things let's go there right now from your textbook you should know the definition of pollination which i already explained the three types also you should definitely know auto you know and zeno other than that you should know what is meant by chasmogamous flower and cleistogamous flower so what does that mean is in certain plants like oxalis viola and commonilla what happens is there will be two types of flowers for the same plant one flower which is completely open called as chasmogamous and the other flower which is completely closed called as cleistogamous so what is so special about them the cleistogamous one that is the one that doesn't open at all you can imagine that the pollen grain cannot go out of the flower at all right so it is invariably autogamous please remember the statement because this comes in your recent assertion cleistogamous are invariably autogamous meaning in that cross pollination that is any other type of pollination is impossible for it okay even gitanogamy or xenogamy both are impossible self itself that is get to know which is self itself cannot be uh, happening in these kind of flowers that is the uh, importance of cleistogamous chasmogamous on the other hand all three are possible so uh, please remember all these statements because uh, from here a lot of questions come okay then coming to agents of pollination i told you what is biotic and abiotic which is most uh, common one you should know majority of the plants use biotic agents than compared to abiotic agents please underline that statement then among abiotic if it is using abiotic which is more prominent 
compared to water it is wind which is more prominent again underline that what are the features of wind pollinated you can imagine this right the wind has to take it away so pollen should be lightweight stamen is uh, somewhat feathery and it is um, you know protruding out all those points single ovule your neat question comes from here okay so please remember on this uh, coming to water only 30 genera undergo water pollination uh, meaning the agent is water okay so uh, underline these two statements 30 genera among the 30 genera most of them are monocots all right so uh, again which all are water pollinated see this statement very carefully um valisneria hydrilla sea grasses like zostera so three of them are water pollinated okay how does the water pollination occur also you should know the female flowers stay there itself male flowers float read up that part and you need not explain but here this statement i want you to underline again water hyacinth and water lily are not pollinated by water they are pollinated by insect or wind this is where you will lose your marks the word is water hyacinth word is water lily from there you will end up writing water is a pollinating agent they will ask you also it is not water it is instead wind which is the pollinating agent okay moving down uh what is special about water pollinated species what is special about their pollen so here underline that there is a uh, mucilaginous covering which is basically a glycoprotein uh, which is covering the pollen grain uh, what is the purpose of it to protect it from getting wet okay moving ahead um, majority of the flowering plants use biotic agents remember this please and then among the uh, biotic agents most common ones are these these underline that again um for, so it if it is an insect pollinated one what are the features which is self explanatory like colorful uh, very attractive features like a uh, good scent uh, from the petals are very colorful all those i don't think uh, explanation is required you can read up by yourself please underline the statement which all uh, if a flower is <coughs> emitting fowl order what is the agent of pollination it is beetles and flies again one mark question you will get from there okay another question is what is meant by a floral reward floral reward is nothing but in order to pollinate what does the plant give in return for the pollinating agent that is called floral reward but sometimes what happens is even after taking the reward some uh, organisms will not help in pollination such are called as pollen droppers also remember this two statements i think it is not a big deal you can remember this okay largest um tallest flower amorphophallus again one mark question um important question two mark question what is the relationship between moth and yucca underline it properly moth deposits its egg in the locule of ovary moths uh, moth Uh, reward that the yucca plant is giving is this moth gets to deposits its egg in the a compartment of the ovary one statement and what does yucca plant get the moth will in, uh, instead pollinate the flower okay coming to outbreeding i told you what is outbreeding all the mechanisms that the plant come uh, plant does in order to make sure cross pollination is happening those are called as outbreeding devices i have written it down for you uh, instead of reading the whole thing you can note it down uh, anther and stigma can uh, mature at different times different position of anther and stigma then last one self incompatibility meaning even if pollen grain falls on the stigma of the same flower it will not pollinate these are uh, some of the important devices to uh, prevent self pollination in other words to promote cross pollination those are called as outbreeding devices okay uh, what's the next thing pollen pistil interaction you just have to read through what does that mean uh, so pollen recognition and all that there is nothing more for me to explain now what is what if the pollinator is a human being then we call that as artificial hybridization under that what all does um, come under artificial hybridization the there are three technique three things that they do one technique only 
what is it first removal of anther from the flower bud is called as emasculation emasculation and then covering it up using a butter paper called bagging and there is tagging tagging is giving a tag to it that's it now one more question when is emasculation not needed if the female plant is unisexual underline that as well please so this much you should study which will hardly take you uh, maybe half an hour so please don't miss anything from here because this part a lot of questions come thank you Thank you.